Hey everyone, it's Justine and welcome to another April collaboration. Today I am focusing on layering stamps, dies, and stencils. And I'm going to be collaborating today with Laurel Beard and It's Me JD, who are two of my favorite video makers. I know I've been saying that all month, but seriously, there's some pretty amazing people out there that you need to check out. So don't forget to give them a like, subscribe to their channels, and let them know that I sent you over. The first one I'm going to start off with is layering stamps. Now I'm going to be using this Rose Blossom Altenew stamp set that is exclusive to scrapbook.com for a limited time. And I am going to be showing you my little technique with the Misty. Now if you watched my video the other day on crafty hacks, I did already show this technique. But I also wanted to mention that inside your Altenew stamps, they do come with pamphlets with card ideas or even cards you could snip out and use if you want, as well as color combination ideas for these layering stamps so you can really just layer them in any color that you wish and they make such great color families. Altenew great makes great inks and so does scrapbook.com. So I'm using scrapbook.com inks today. I like the fact that they have pink one, pink two, pink three, pink four. Makes it super easy and I love the grip that they have on their ink pads. So I'm going to go ahead and do my technique here. Now in total in real time if I were not speeding this up it took me four and a half minutes to stamp these four stamps and this is the first time I have ever used them. So I had to figure out the alignment and all that stuff and I didn't cut any anything out of that for this video so you can see if I struggled with the alignment or not which I didn't. So I'm going ahead and stamping the first layer in pink one which is a very subtle subtle ink. You can see that I rotate each time and that ensures that I can go ahead and stamp four of these. The paper that I'm using today is six by six Nina Solar White cardstock. I'm now going on with pink two and I'm stamping the second layer of the rose and you can see it slowly starting to come to life. It's absolutely stunning and I love how lifelike it is when I'm all finished with the fourth layer. The third layer obviously stamping in pink three and then I'm going to go ahead and add those there. Now you could easily stop here for kind of a no line stamping or coloring sort of look or you could go ahead and add the fourth layer if you like that gives a little bit of an outline around it and gives it a bit more of a frame. Completely up to you how you want to do it. But I like both ways. I then went ahead and fussy cut them because I'm crazy. No, I'm just kidding. I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to do the leaves. Those are the next up in the stamp ink techniques here. I'm also using green one, green two, and green three. I love the names. There are real names for them, but I do like that underneath they kind of have the green one, two, and three. So I can keep everything perfect. So going ahead and adding the details in the leaves here and I'm just going and adding the three, the third and final layer, just adding those fine lines for the final leaves. As I said, I did go ahead and fussy cut everything. The leaves I kind of just went around and I didn't do a particularly great job on them, but the roses I tried to do a little bit better of a job on them. But overall, because it's a collage cluster in the end, you probably won't notice if you have a little bit of white space around the edges. No big deal at all. So I started placing these without adhering them and I liked the way that it looked so I adhered the three roses down and I used all of the leaves from my pattern. I have a leftover rose though and I didn't care for it very much so what I did was just slowly cut underneath the roses and I removed my cluster and the reason why was I was going to use a black sentiment and I wanted to make sure that the black stood out so I grabbed one of the stamps that also came in this rose set and I decided to add this to the background just to add a little bit more color and pop to my cluster. How's that for a little card surgery? <laughs> I tend to, the way I glue tends to make me allow to do this because I'll only add glue for example in the center and then that way if I need to cut underneath on the sides of the stamp it's no big deal at all. You can see the black that I'm stamping here is a bit of a hot mess but because I'm adding this cluster over top it's no big deal at all and when I go and add the sentiment at the end you'll see that the sentiment has a little bit more of a life to it when the black is on the background. The last thing I wanted to do was add a couple of Nouveau drops. I just wanted some white subtle accents just to kind of add to the cluster here. I put them in a triangular shape, one at the top or top left and then one at the bottom and then I added a couple to the sentiments as well because I felt like it, the triangles needed to make a triangle if that makes sense. So when it was all finished, it just looked like this and I was all finished making this card. So that's stamping stencil or stamping layers. That's 
I love the way that the flowers just stamp so beautifully. Altenu has amazing amounts of these florals patterns here in variety of different types of florals and they are all one more detailed than the next. They're absolutely stunning. So for the layering stencils, I've used this layering stencil before and this has four different stencils to it. This is from Birch Press Design and I decided to spray it with some pixie spray. Now pixie spray is a stencil adhesive, so it's a temporary adhesive obviously, and I added a piece of paper underneath to protect my surface and I let it dry for about one minute and now it's going to stick perfectly on my paper without having to adhere it down with messy tapes and things like that. Now it seems to be five minute day here in my house and even though I'm speeding you up a bit here, I took five minutes to create this card. I'm using the same inks as I did for the previous card, the pink one, two, three, and four, and today I started with the darkest color, which is a little bit rare for me, but I thought I'd give it a try. So I removed the circle, which is stencil number one, which you don't have to include at all if you don't want to, and I added stencil number two onto my card using red number three this time. Going ahead and going in a circular motion with a blending brush and just going ahead over top of this stencil, being sure to not forget the corners. Looks a little bit weird at the moment, but that's because I'm not finished with the layers. Going on to layer number three, I'm adding pink number two. I wanted to do this in a little bit of a different color. I did this in blue before and I'll link to that video in the information card above or in the video description below and it turned out absolutely stunning. I love the way that it turned out when it was all said and done. The final and fourth layer I'm using pink number one and you're going to see that it fills in a lot of the colored area or a lot of the white areas that we had before but you still have some white space when it's all finished said and done. So I wanted to compare for you. So I did on the card on the left, the darkest to the lightest color. And on the right, I did the lightest to the darkest color. Now you can see that I messed that up in the video here by going from the darkest to the lightest. But I thought I didn't really care for the background when I did light to dark at first. So I thought I'd show both options. So definitely go light to dark. It's going to be a lot prettier when it's all said and done and much more detailed. To finalize the card, I added a layering sentiment die that is the word friend in silver and it comes with a shadow die for the background in white and I stamped you mean the world to me and I embossed it in white embossing powder on black paper to add to the bottom. I love the way that this turned out. I think it's absolutely beautiful when it's all said and done. And here is a final look at that card here before we move on to layering dies. And I'm also using some birch press designs for these ones. Now I decided to do something a little bit different today because I'm always trying to find different ways to use these layering dies so you get the most out of them. And this time I decided to use a positive and negative part of the die. So this is kind of a no waste card. I'm using December Dyes cardstock from Tonic Studios and this has textured paper so it comes with these really pretty designs and the feel of it is really pretty. I'm going to go ahead and lay out the three types of cardstock that I'm going to use with the three dies. I find with my Gemini Junior sometimes I forget if I place the cardstock up or place the cardstock down and it doesn't really matter how you do it for this card here as long as they're all the same. So if you put each die in individually, either your cardstock has to face up each time or face down each time. Not one up, one down, or else they won't line up. So when they're all finished being die cut, I decided to grab the thinnest piece and I'm adding glue you can see in the center of those diamonds. I'm using the frame here, so the actual die cut that's meant to be used as just a guide. It's not glued down there at all this circular piece. And I'm going to go ahead and add in all these shapes. I'm going to go ahead and add the outer layer of shapes as well. Now this is going to be really fun and you can pick and choose which ones you prefer to have on your card. You'll see that I didn't use every single piece that was die cut. But keeping them in the die cuts when I took them out of the machine definitely helped me with the placement of all these little pieces. So now I'm done my first layer, I can peel up my frame and I'm going to use that for a second card so no worries there. I'm going to grab the die B and I'm going to go ahead and add the same thing, the glue to the cardstock. I'm using the blue paper as a frame and then I'm just going to go ahead and add these into the cardstock. And I'm just going to skip ahead to finish that off so you don't get too bored while you're sitting here waiting for me. 
And the time to do this wasn't too bad as much as it might seem like it in the video. It took me about seven and a half minutes and I got two cards out of the deal for the actual gluing part. So it's not too bad. But then again, I am pretty quick at what I do, but overall it shouldn't be too, too tedious of a task. So I'm just going to go ahead and add some of the darkest layer pieces in here. And I could have stopped there. I think it looks really stunning the way that it is. But I did decide to go and add one more layer of these small pieces. And that was 100% my choice. So when that was all said and done, I had this beautiful negative piece from the dies. And I didn't waste any cardstock. And I think it looks absolutely beautiful. But you can go ahead then and grab your three layers of the actual die cuts that are supposed to be used and line those up for a card. So now I'm just grabbing my piece of paper here and I'm going to glue the original die cut. So instead of working smallest to biggest, I'm going to work biggest to smallest this time. And you'll see that they layer just beautifully on top of each other. So with these dies, as I always mention in my videos, they are a little bit on the pricier side. However, what I love about them is how versatile they are. And so you can go ahead and cut out with any color cardstock you want, embossed cardstock, tin, uh, foil cardstock, glitter cardstock. You can go ahead and cut from blended backgrounds. Just the possibilities and combinations of these can be really endless. And I think it creates that one beautiful focal point that your card really doesn't need anything else but a small sentiment when it's all said and done. So to me, I like the investment and I think they're absolutely stunning. So I went ahead and stamped a little bit here on the banners uh, that I pre-stamped just off screen since I'm sure everyone knows how to stamp if you're watching my videos. And I just stamped a simple thinking of you and trimmed that down very thin. And I stamped the same sentiment for both cards. Here's a final look at the cards and don't forget if you have any questions I always answer the comments below if you have them. And don't forget to check out Laurel and It's Me JD's videos and subscribe to their channels as well. Thanks so much for watching everyone and have a wonderful day. You can finalize here by subscribing to my channel or checking out the next suggested video. Bye for now.